Okay, so I'm here to try to indoctrinate you guys into the Empire. Uh, those rebel spies are trying to convince us otherwise, but it's, it's not worth it. Uh, so basically, I constructed an entire talk, which is a massive excuse for me to teach you guys some quantum mechanics. Um, <laughs> now, I should start with a warning that I am autistic, so um, if my speech ends up being terrible, you can, you can blame it on that. So I have, I have a good excuse for wanting to talk about quantum mechanics. Uh, and basically, well, uh, here's part of it. Uh, I, I don't know anyone who's not excited about this. <laughs> but uh, the, the issue really is that, uh, you know, every single movie that people are coming out with are just, is, is something that's based off of already existing material. Uh, people aren't coming up with any original movies anymore. And at this point, every single superhero, even if he was a big deal or not a big deal, is getting his own movie. And if you think this is just a problem with superheroes, uh, here are some franchises that are getting sequels and remakes and reboots and everything. Uh, you know, people aren't coming up with ideas anymore. Uh, if you think this just affects movies, here, here are some video games that I found the other day. <laughs> These are the only two that aren't based off of an existing franchise. <laughs> and those aren't even that good. <laughs> so here's probably one of the worst culprits. Uh, Facebook. <laughs> At this point, it seems like everything is just some excuse to gather as many likes and shares as possible. Uh, and few people actually bother putting content into their posts, and it started to affect journalism as well, because, you know, nowadays people come up with these clickbait articles and they say, oh, you know, uh, I'm going to spend as little time creating content as possible, and I'm just going to upload it to Facebook, and it'll make ad revenue. Yay. So, I have a question for you guys, which is that, you know, no one else is coming up with any ideas, and, well, someone's got to do it, because, you know, if, if no one does, then 20, 30 years, people aren't going to know what a new good idea is. So, my question is, well, I want you guys to come up with the ideas. <laughs> it's up to you <laughs> to come up with new ideas. So... Uh, now, now is, I, I'm, I'm one step closer to quantum mechanics. Uh, so, uh, basically, I, I have secrets. I have secrets from science that I want to tell you about coming up with ideas and whatever. Uh, and the best way to learn from science how to come up with great ideas is to look at our history. Um, and perhaps the best place in history to look at for science is, you know, the beginning of the 20th century. That's when we really came up with many great ideas. That's when relativity and quantum mechanics were born and modern physics was born. So, uh, oh, I, I forgot this example. Also, this originality thing, it affects quantum gravity as well. Uh, quantum gravity is something I work on and it's really exciting and we have all these theories now that are able to describe it, but we have absolutely no idea what experiments are for these theories. <laughs> we, we've just been hallucinating. <laughs> I can confirm this. <laughs> that, that was a good one. I'm sorry. <laughs> so, I have these. Uh, now, now is your excuse to go to sleep. Uh, so, uh, can anyone tell me something special about these equations? Uh, the, these equations, they were invented to try to describe electromagnetism and electrodynamics, and uh, they're, they're very successful. But there's something very special about them. Does anyone, does anyone know? No? Okay, I, I have the answer. Uh, there's this term right here. And the thing that's special about this term is this prefactor here. And this C, it has the units of a speed, and this ends up being the speed of light. And the thing that's awesome about these equations is we started from electricity. We didn't even want to do relativity or understand gravity or whatever. And, uh, you know, magically the speed of light shows up in here. And what this tells you is that um, if you want to have a theory of electromagnetism, it has to have a universal speed limit. Whereas in regular F equals MA or in the physics they teach you in high school, uh, 
they assume no universal speed limit. They just say, you know, if I were to throw a ball on a train, and the speeds add. So uh, a lot of people did not want to accept this because they had a really nice theory of Newtonian mechanics, and it was pretty simple. It started off with uh, fairly naive assumptions, and people assumed, oh, well, it can't be any different, so there's something wrong here. There's something wrong with how we're interpreting this. So, you know, people, they say, I'm, uh, I'm going to invent this ether theory, famous from Thor the Dark World. Um, <laughs> so, uh, and they just invented all kinds of crazy things to try to accommodate the Maxwell equations, which ended up being insanely successful with Newtonian physics. And we know that these are right. We know these are right because your cell phones work. Uh, <laughs> Thank you, Maxwell. <laughs> so, uh, Einstein, he was brave enough, after 50 years of completely failed attempts at trying to, you know, fix this, he said, oh, well, let's just accept this as it is, and let's introduce a new principle, which is that the speed of light is conserved. Uh, and that's, that's the birthplace of relativity. And the thing that's to be special, or the thing that's to be learned here, is that uh, we have to be brave and we have to be willing to uh, test our assumptions. We could be doing foolish things at any time. Uh, those, many of the theories of quantum gravity I mentioned earlier are completely ridiculous. Uh, uh, let's see. So you, you have to be brave. The, the other thing is, this is a bit of a misconception about the history of relativity, which is that uh, people assume that Einstein came up with it all on his own. And this is completely ridiculous. Here, here are some of the people who were most important uh, in the discovery of special relativity. Um, and, you know, I have Maxwell and some of the experimentalists, and there are more people. And it gets even better, because when I go to general relativity, suddenly we have the collaborations of tons of people. Um, and it's not really possible to say at this point that general relativity is up to one person. There, there are a lot of contributions that have come from a lot of different people. Uh, just as an aside, we need more women on here. Uh, you guys can solve that too. Uh, so, lessons. Uh, keep an open mind and don't work alone. Uh, collaborating, you'll, you'll realize that you're doing stupid things all the time. Your, your friends will tell you, oh, you're, you're doing this stupidly or you could do this better and you'll make the same mistakes over and over and over again if, if you work on your own. So if you're gonna, if you're gonna try to come up with something, do, do it with friends. Uh, I have no idea what happened here. Uh, this is supposed to be the uh, polarization diagram coming from the bicep experiment. Have you guys heard of bicep? No? So... <laughs> <laughs> But BICEP, basically what it does is it's a proposed experiment to try to, to test this thing called inflation. And uh, people were jumping up and down all of last year because BICEP had seen something. They had seen a signal, which is not this. <laughs> and immediately they assumed that this signal corresponded to their theory. Um, and they were jumping up and down saying, oh, cosmology is real. Our ideas are actually real. Uh, and they, they, they sort of, I don't know, they, they came to this conclusion way too quickly because it turned out this, this entire signal, it could be generated using just uh, things that we already knew existed. Um, basically, it turns out this entire signal was generated by uh, the dust in the Milky Way galaxy. So they didn't discover a, a new theory for cosmology, they discovered the Milky Way, which unfortunately we already knew about. <laughs> So uh, the lesson here is just to, you know, we got to be suspicious about these things. Um, really, all, you, you know, there were hints that inflation was going to be real and, uh, you know, uh, people just got excited, okay? But uh, no one actually bothered checking, oh, could this signal have been generated by something else? And eventually some brilliant postdoc, uh, he was the only one to challenge the paper and he figured out that it was ridiculous. So, uh, I don't know, just be careful. And uh, one last point, which I don't have a pretty picture for. Oh, actually, no, wait, I do. This, this was the excuse I gave the entire talk for. <laughs> 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 so.
so this is, this is a, what's called the Stern Gerlach experiment. And what's awesome is that it tells you uh, most of the things that you need to know about non-relativistic quantum mechanics. Um, it has most of the interesting things here. So imagine I have a beam of electrons that I create over here, and I shoot this beam of electrons between some magnets. Uh, basically, the result of the experiment is uh, sometimes the electrons will, go, will deflect upwards in the magnet, and other times they will deflect downwards in the magnet, um, as indicated by these two blue lines. And is that still the Imperial March? <laughs> awesome. <laughs> <laughs> I, I should just play that for the rest of this thing. <laughs> so, uh, you know, there's, there's no way to tell ahead of time which path the electron is going to go into. Um, and this is the key thing about quantum mechanics. It tells you that the universe is this probabilistic thing. It tells you that you have to use probabilities in order to describe things. And there are several other key features that we can derive from this. Um, so we say that we use probabilities in order to describe things. The electron goes up 50-50, you can't tell. And we've actually done experiments, and you can literally prove that it's impossible to tell whether it's going to go up or down. Um, measurement uh, in the sense of I have a screen over here, and the screen will detect, did the electron go up or down? Uh, it collapses the state in some sense. So originally, it's 50-50 after I shoot it between the magnets. However, if I were to look at the particle, it forces it to be somewhere. And that's why I see all of you in one spot, because I'm, I'm looking at you. Uh, <laughs> so, um, another interesting result of quantum mechanics is oftentimes there are only a couple of possibilities uh, for what the state of the system can take, or basically what it needs to be is finite, or uh, finite is in the set of in integers, uh, numbers. Uh, and this is a generic feature. For example, the energy levels of a hydrogen atom, those end up being uh, countable. Like there's a lowest energy and then there's a higher energy and a higher one and a higher one. And the electron is forced to stay in a, one of those paths. Um, and then one last thing that we can infer from this experiment is that particles, they have this intrinsic thing called spin. And uh, this, this is supposed to be H bar. My slides don't like me. Uh, but basically, um, in order to generate, what the? In order to, ge <laughs> I, I, I'm I'm bad at the clicker apparently. It, it doesn't like me. Uh, it turns out you can generate this by assuming that the electron is rotating in some artificial sense. Not that it's physically rotating, but it has this internal idea of whether it's rotating up or down. And this introduces a new scale called Planck's constant, and that tells you how quantum mechanical a system is. Uh, now, you could ask me why am I telling you about all of this and I don't have a good answer to that. I... <laughs> I, I, I just like quantum mechanics and think that people should, should know more about it. We could totally teach it in high schools. I don't know why we don't do that now. Uh, so it turns out this probability, I, this idea that the, the state of a system is not in one location, that, it can get, that the electron can go up or down, this is related to the idea of the Heisenberg uncertainty principle. And basically the uncertainty principle tells you that um, you can't exactly know both your position and your momentum at the same time. And there are lots of really terrible jokes that are spawned off of this. <laughs> uh, but. It turns out that this, physically speaking, and not comedically, uh, this, this uh, relationship, it tells you how to, it's basically the analog of F equals MA. It can tell you how to evolve a state forwards in time. Okay, so here are the formal mathematical assumptions. Uh, I'm, I'm just gonna leave these up here, just for reasons. <laughs> Observe. <laughs> uh, I'm, I'm not gonna, teach you all of the math required for this, but it, they're there. Um, so let's see, what was I going to say? Uh, the last thing that I wanted to point out was that, you know, I, people talk, I, I meet tons of people who try to tell me about quantum mechanics and try to tell me about their alternative theories of the universe and how string theory is wrong that I meet in the general public. And 
100% of the time, their ideas have been ridiculous. <laughs> and basically, the, the reason is that, you know, the, these guys, they, uh, they, they hear about quantum mechanics on the news or whatever, and they say, oh, well, you know, I've got a good idea about what the field is and what the open problems are, and I know how to realistically solve things now. Um, <laughs> but... Um, they, they, they like try to correct the theory without even knowing what it is, and they try to tell me, uh, they try to tell me things about what physics means before they know any physics. And so, if I were to give one real piece of advice, I would say, if you're going to do anything, I, I would first learn what's already known about this subject very, very well. If you're going to write a, a movie, like study the greats like Stanley Kubrick and all of his friends. Um, in, if you're going to do physics, read the original papers of quantum mechanics, learn it formally, and then once you've done this, you, you have the opportunity to rebel. So that, that gives me my last point. Um, uh, you know, I, I, I don't know, I meet people who usually do one but not the other, so someone needs to do both. I, uh, I don't really have much else to say, so okay, bye. <laughs> <laughs>